Hi, this is Ryan with Iron Planet Hobbies. And in part three of this series on programming the DR5033 DigiBoost, I will be going over some of the options that are available when setting it up. In the previous video, we discussed how to set the module app ID, uh, which we have these here, one and five. Uh, so starting off over here, the first one on the list is the module address and you should know how to do that now. And then let's jump on down here to number eight. Uh, this is a switching address that can be set to switch the booster on or off. And the way this would work is you would change your CV value of eight over here in the local net CV programming to match the switching address that you would like. So in this example here, we have the 5033 booster, module number five, and we would change the CV value or CV number here of eight to whichever switching address you would like. If you would like address 100 to go right here, then simply enter 100, and we can change this to eight and press this button right here and that will write the value to the booster. Then on your throttle, if you dial up a switch value of 100 and send a thrown or closed command, it will turn the booster on or off. The next one here is turn on automatically following a short circuit in three millisecond steps. The standard value is equivalent to approximately three quarters of a second or 750 milliseconds. I believe the default value here works just fine. If you have a reason that you need the booster to turn back on faster than that, you can simply lower the range down all the way down toward 64. Or if you would like the booster to wait longer to turn back on, you can turn it up to 30,000 and uh, that would take quite a while to turn back on. The next one over here is value 12, and this is the waiting time after automatic polarity reversal of the output prior to short circuit being reported in three millisecond steps. So what happens is, let's say there's a short circuit on the block that the booster is connected to. Uh, it also relates to this one, the next one as well. So it's going to see and recognize that there is a short circuit and using this number here, which is set for a default of 32, it will wait that long to see if the short circuit clears. If not, it's going to reverse the polarity output of the booster and will wait the same amount of time uh, after the reversal that it's set here. And then it's going to report that there is a short circuit and will turn off the power output power of the booster. So these both here can be changed to your liking. However, the default settings on these seems to work just fine. Um, you can set up here an optional switching address to reverse the polarity of the booster. The rest of the writing here is cut off from this owner's manual, but it is talking about switching the address to reverse the polarity output of the booster. In other words, you can set a switching address also for this that by sending a thrown or closed command will change the polarity output automatically. Uh, these next four sections we will discuss in a future video. And down here, uh, this can be a bit overwhelming at first if you're not used to how bit values are set up and used when programming CVs. Um, however, I can explain this to you to where it's very easy to understand and very easy to set up. All of these down here are based upon this number three right up here. Uh, this Xi Honduras actually says C below. So this is it down here for CV value three. So what you want to do is to change this. You want to move this over here to CV number three and that will give you the option of switching any of these. 
the numbers over here on your left, the 0, 1, 2, 3, and then over here in this column, 4, 5, 6, and 7, you can pretty much ignore those when you are programming. Just think of these more as labels for these groups of options that you can have either on or off. So, uh, starting here with number 1, it says start the output from the booster as soon as there is an input signal, or under the number 2, which is a va or value number 2 here, start the output from the booster when the go button is pressed or the connected switching address is green. And this also applies to the on-off settings if you are using a Digitrax DT400 series throttle. So by pressing power and the plus and minus sign, uh, you can the booster will respond and turn on or off whenever the global power from the throttle or the command station is changed. So I prefer to have this as number two uh, being on. The default is zero, but I like to have it on number two. This one down here, booster sends no GP on or GP off, and that stands for global power on or global power off on the local net report. Even when there is a short circuit, the automatic short circuit repair is active. What happens here is if this is set to on right here, then all boosters, including the command station, the track power is turned off whenever there is a short circuit. If you are having a home operating session, you would not want your global power being turned off just because one booster has a short circuit. However, if you are at a train show or a large display layout, maybe like a museum, where you have multiple trains crossing the same section of track, you may want this on. For instance, if a long train enters a block and short circuits on a turnout, and another operator on the other side of the aisle is distracted by a train show guest, and his train continues to keep running and goes around the corner and could crash into the rear of the other train. So if this is on, it will actually stop all the trains. So there are pluses and minuses for both of these settings. I prefer to not turn off the command station for the home layout. Uh, these are not used down here, so you will always need the value of 8. Uh, the next section over here, booster sends no special local net report if there is a short circuit or you can have it send out a local net report if it is short circuited. So that's just something that's going to read on the local net. However, the, if you are using the Digicentral DR5000, that short circuit will also turn off the track power. So I choose no on this one myself. And then the next group is start the booster output without reversed polarity. Um, that is what I choose for mine, um, somebody may want to start the booster automatically with polarity reversed, and if you need that option, you can turn it on right there. And the next section has the automatic polarity reversal on or off, and this would work in a reversing section of the layout. Um, however, I choose to turn this off because if there is a short circuit when the polarity is normal, it will reverse, and the blue light will come on on the booster. And if there is a second short circuit while the blue light is on, it will send out a global power off command. So I choose not to use the automatic polarity reversal. Now, how do you set these bits? Um, by using local net CV3, very easy. Over here, again, your 5033 module, module address 5, your CV3. All of this stays the same no matter which options over here you choose. All you do is simply add the values, and that's the number you program in right here as your value. So if I want number 2, and then in this section I want 0, this section is automatically 8, so you have to add 8. So now I am at 10. I want this option here, so there's a 0. I want this option right here, so that's a 0. And I want this option right here, 
So that is a zero. So over here, I will program 10 and write this to the booster. And this clip turns green and says OK right here. And it automatically sets the bits for you. So you don't have to program those manually. And I won't go into all the mechanics behind how the bits are calculated. Um, all you really need to know is you add up these values of the options in any order or number all the way from 8 being the lowest all the way up to whatever all of these add up to would be the highest. So that makes it really easy to set those options. Again, it's just all in three and then add the values of the options that you want. You're either going to have a zero or a number in each option. The first one is a zero, the second option has the number, and again you could have three or four of these that have numbers, or you could have just the number eight being the lowest. And that's how you set the options for the DR5033 booster. Please like and subscribe for more videos. Thanks again for watching.